All right, so we're going to do a more difficult problem now, but it's not that bad, and we're going to go through it step by step. So, the first step, step one, is to take it to take the key pattern and transform it into a trig identity. So the trig identity we'll be using for this problem is tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. Okay? Because this matches this. So we'll set it as four x squared equals tangent that's a bad tangent, I'm gonna erase that. I apologize. A little OCD. <laughs> tangent squared theta. And remember the last problem where we set x squared equal to 9 sine squared theta? We can also do the opposite and just set this entire part with the 4 equal to tan squared theta. Okay? So then we square root that and we get 2x equals tangent theta. And then you derive it and you get dx equals, you move the, the two over here, so you get one half secant squared theta. So these are your substitutions. Remember this. All right. Okay, so now that we have our substitutions, time for step two. Okay, so that's substitution. So you plug what you found here back into the original problem. So you would end up with the integral of one half secant squared theta over tangent theta. We're going to take a break. We've been bad people. <laughs> well, we apologize. We've been putting our d thetas the entire time. We hate these thetas, but they should be here. Because when you derive any theta, you have to get a d theta. Just like when you derive any x, you have to get a dx. So, that's what we did wrong. We fixed it. We'll continue to do it correctly for the rest of the video. We apologize. We will now return to our regular programming. Okay, so, remember, we're substituting our equations, oh, our, for our substitutions back into the original equation. So we substituted for dx, d theta, and then we substituted for the x, and now we have to substitute for the square root. So we get the square root of tangent squared theta plus 1. So we're going to take this problem and move on to step 3. Okay, so next step is step 3, which is to solve. So we take the equation that we have, which was one half secant squared theta d theta. Don't forget it. You will, and it's it's going to happen, and you shouldn't. It's bad, especially when it's on video, and everyone will see it forever. And then you know that if you have to plug this in here, you'll get one half tangent, because you remember two x equals this, so one x equals one half tangent theta times, and I think I forgot that in the last step, it's supposed to be one half, I apologize, I'm sorry, times square root tangent squared theta plus one. We're solving for this. So, parentheses, I'm on fire today. So. The next step from here is to solve this. And since you know that this is equal to secant squared theta, you can plug in the equation. So you get 1 half secant squared theta d theta over 1 half tangent theta times, remember, the square root of secant squared theta, which you can turn into the integral of one half 
secant squared theta d theta over one half tangent times tangent theta times secant theta. So take this equation and we can simplify some things. You can simplify the one half because those cancel out. You can simplify one secant, so the secant goes away, and one of these secants go away. So if we take this answer and write it out again, it is integral of secant theta v theta over tangent theta. We're going to take a break to figure out what we're supposed to do next, because we forgot. Okay, so once you simplify the last step, you get this. Now, this is tough, but you can turn it into some other trig parts. So you know that secant is equal to 1 over cosine, and that t this is tangent, but this is, uh, this is 1 over tangent, so it's equal to cotangent, and that cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. So, you can go and you can cancel out these two cosines and you end up with the integral of 1 over sine theta d theta, which can turn into 1 integral, I don't know where that one came from, I'm getting slow, the integral of cosecant theta d theta. So, the steps for solving this. You have to turn these into s cosines and sines, and, and express them in terms of sine and cosine, cancel out the two cosines, so then you get 1 over sine theta, and then you can simplify that straight into cosecant theta d theta. So then the integral of this is negative natural log of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta plus c. Another one. C's d theta is important. We were here before you. We're older and wiser and we say these are important. So you need to listen to it. Okay. Alright, now it's time for step four, the unfortunate triangle step. So, always start out with your triangle. And this is a right angle. This is your theta. And so you can solve for tangent here. And so then you would know that if tangent theta equals 2x, and you, that's the same as tangent theta equaling 2x over 1. So you know that the opposite is 2x, the adjacent is 1, which means that the hypotenuse is 4x squared plus 1. Now, cool trick, this will usually equal this, actually will almost always equal this. So if it doesn't equal, if these two aren't equal, you might have done something wrong. Just a little fact of trig substitutions. So just remember that. This and this should usually be equal. Okay, so you know that cosecant is the opposite of sine, which means that it's hypotenuse over opposite. So you can plug this back in. So negative ln, so you have hypotenuse over opposite, which so that would be 4x squared plus 1 over 2x, and then plus, and cotangent is adjacent over opposite, so that would be 1 over 2x plus c. And that is the final answer. Plus, with the plus c and everything. 